Don't call yourself an entrepreneur. I think entrepreneurship isn't a profession, it's, it's a lifestyle. You're a person who really likes building products, probably. You're, you're a person who's very quirky and curious, affecting millions of lives, inventing a new technology, doing something that no one else has done before, shocking the world. The condition of entrepreneurship is just being a little insane. That's what makes us, um, what is it, a club of crazies? Even if it's shaking, you still have that deep, unwavering belief that you can make it work, and there has to be a way through this problem, one way or another. It's all about people, how you build a team, how you motivate them, but also how you challenge them, and how comfortable you feel being challenged. Not all of us can lead, but this is a special type of sport. Companies aren't easy. They don't just get on a track and, and go cruising down on like a runaway train. You know, things get off track constantly. The challenge with most startups is just dealing with the emotional ups and downs, which are like huge. <laughs> I don't think you have to be great at everything. I think you have to understand your strengths and weakness and optimize for the things that you're, you're really, um, you know, kind of specially suited for. The first year too, when you're bootstrapping, but it's only you and a few founders, and it can basically break apart all the time. It's like having a kid, like you, you, you need to give them freedom and you need to trust them and you need to trust the company. But you don't, you worry all the time. You know where your revenue's coming from, but you don't know where it'll come from tomorrow. Like, nothing's set in stone. You can't uh, have an entire company of panicking individuals. You may have a massive panic mode attack, crazy blaring sirens in your head, but no one can hear about it. One of the toughest things for entrepreneurs to do is, th is to think small first, right? But by definition, all big businesses started small. No business started big out of the gate, right? You have to start small. I actually hit sort of this wall of fear uh, when we were about 30 people. And then we raised venture capital and we knew that we would grow from 30 to 100 people in less than a year. And I honestly felt almost paralyzed with fear. I've had my share of failures and I think that's uh, kind of what makes a person uh, sort of ready for success. I went 0 for 30 on investment pitches that fall. When I went in to see uh, Puneet, I was then one for 31. You're gonna screw up. If you're gonna go fast enough to succeed, you're gonna make mistakes. If you're not making mistakes, you're going too slow, you'll never win. And it's all about how you deal with those mistakes, that's the key. The day we made the decision to invest, it felt good. And you know what? We have to go through this, because if we don't allow ourselves to make mistakes, then we'll never invest in things which are radical, which are really risky. You actually need that motivation of like, it's do or die. Otherwise, you're just not gonna get behind what you're doing. It's the mental block that can kind of prevent you from doing it. But once you kind of bag in the saddle, things are easy. You start out kind of as an explorer or as a learner, and then you make something. And at a certain point, there's this level of expertise. You're like, I got it, I know what I'm doing. I guess the sooner you start, the faster you'll learn those things. I would advise any entrepreneur, whether seasoned or not, to, to really experience the amplitude, the brazen bravado that you have to have to be able to push something new in the world, and the deep, grounded humility that says, this could really screw up. So be brazen, but don't be arrogant, and be humble, um, but don't be timid. I would tell them, don't be an entrepreneur because your dad is an entrepreneur. I would say that, you know, do it because you feel like that's who you are and what you want to do and that, you know, you feel some massive frustration with something and you want to make it better. Oh, of course, of course I could have worked harder, I could have made better decisions, I could have, you know, hired better people, made a better product, marketed myself better, gotten more customers. There's a million things you could have done, but that doesn't fucking matter because you can't roll the back of the clock. There's nothing you can do about what happened in the past. There's a difference between things you can control and things you can't. And if you worry about the things you can't control, you're just gonna waste time. And if you worry about the things you can control, you'll make an impact. And it's entirely possible that this version of myself will not be the successful one. You're gonna dedicate so much of your life and time and sweat and blood and like, you know, lose friendships or whatever. You might as well be working on something that's like, you feel it has potential to have massive impact. I don't think everybody should be an entrepreneur. There are some people whose lives will be made miserable by the fact that they will take on this ambiguity and risk and responsibility, and that's totally fine. You should do whatever makes you happy, whatever you have passion for. Because risk-taking has to be embraced. 